All right, let's move on to our second um, projection topic person, uh, and that is Chris Bassett. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and switch gears a little bit um, to a newly acquired Toronto Blue Jay, and we're still we're sticking on the mound. Yes, but this. Um, this one is a little bit more interesting because I think we don't necessarily have that kind of connection to uh, to Chris Bassett that we might to Alec Manoa, um, thirty three years old coming into. Um, let me see, where does he turn? Th- just uh, February twenty second is his birthday, so he will be soon to be. <laughs> Soon to be 34. That changes things a little bit for me. <laughs> I didn't realize he was that old. But anyway. Um, but anyway. Signed three years, $63 million. I'm not going to debate whether or not that's money well spent. That's the going rate of pitching these days. So it is what it is. Um, however, one thing that I noticed was that... Um, when you look at Chris Bassett, um, he doesn't necessarily have that track record of innings either. Um, if you go back, you know, so we're looking back to 2014 um, when he broke in as a 25-year-old, 29 innings, then 86, then 28, then 47. Then in 2019 for Oakland, he had 144 innings. 2020 were thrown out the window because it was 2020. Um, 2021, 157, and then last season, 181. So, my question right off the bat before we get going here, Steve, are, do you have any concerns um, about Chris Bassett and his ability to stay healthy, stay on the mound? Not staying healthy, staying on the mound, but I also uh, really believe that he's going to be a five, maybe six inning guy. I, I don't think they're going to look at Chris Bassett um and hopefully they're not still doing that, oh, third time through the lineup crap. But uh, putting that aside, I, I really think that if you look at his career, um, the deeper he goes into games, sometimes he does get into trouble. So I would imagine that they might ask him, hey, look, I want you to maybe ramp it up a little bit over what you've been doing. Give us everything you have for the five innings, five and a third five and two thirds and, and and don't worry about saving yourself for the seventh because you're not pitching there. Right. Right. Karen, are, do you have any concerns about the, the long-term health or the, I guess the full season worth of pitching from Chris Bassett? Um, I mean, nothing, nothing insane. Sorry. As we're, as we're talking here, I was just checking out his, numbers from last year so again he he also averaged uh, ever so slightly above six innings per start and um, 6.03 innings per start and I, I i think he's a solid ad um in that like right when the off season started and lb is anthony castro vince listed the the top potential free agents and they had chris bassett as high as ninth so I think he's going to be a pretty good ad. I'm not saying that he's, I, I'm not saying that he's like an all-star ace caliber pitcher or anything. He's a solid middle of the rotation guy. And I think, I think he's going to do what he was brought in to do. Give them quality innings. And again, he's not someone that's going to go nine innings every start or most starts or anything like that, but keep them in games, give them a chance to win I mean, you you go up and down his his stats year after year after year, and his ERA is usually in the threes, and I'd take that. So, fair enough. Um, so then, let's look at that quality of inning, and I'm going to focus on. I think a long time ago, when we 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 talked about the the stat uh, walks and hits per innings pitched, the WHIP. Um, and that's where we're going to start with our projections with Chris Bassett. Steve, we'll start with you. Chris Bassett, uh, surprisingly or not, um, has not had a whip walk again, walks plus hits per inning pitched, um, since 2019, he hasn't had a whip over 1.2, um, which I found a little surprising in the sense that we're talking about a kind of a mid rotation guy. Right. So, um, Steve, last season, uh, 1.14 whip 
<laughs> I just I just like saying it. So, um, but Steamer once again, a little bit tough, a one point two five whip. So walks and hits per innings pitch, one point two five. Steve, is that reasonable? Is that high, given that he hasn't done anything like that in like four or five years? Okay. Well, dip in ballpark, home ballpark now that he's mm-hmm. pitching in. Okay. I mean, it's not the Oakland Coliseum or Mausoleum, whatever you want to, however you want to refer <laughs> to it. Um, it's not City Field. Uh, now with the new dimensions, and I believe that with the varying heights of the fences, the ball is going to travel better. You might not think you know, aerodynamics, it would matter, but I think it is going to matter. So if he, if he's one, if he's under one, three, if he's in the one, two, one, two, five, one, two, six, whatever, I'm going to be pretty happy. He's a pitch to contact guy. He's not a guy that's going to, I mean, he can strike you out, but that's not his main calling card really. And and so uh, I think Buck Showalter did a really great job with him. You know, and I mean, I think he really did kind of pick and choose, you know, when he gave him a longer leash and when he did not. And it wasn't about the opponent. It really was, I think, what he was observing in the first couple of innings. So I think John Schneider and now with Don Mattingly as the bench coach joining with Pete Walker, I think you've got a nice trio of, of baseball minds that are going to kind of put the analytics aside and say, you know what? I think we, maybe he can do this, or maybe we need to just keep him at five and a third, five and two thirds, whatever, whatever it is. That's acceptable now. But I mean, but for Whip, it, I, I don't think they were being too hard there. I think they're being more realistic because of the ballpark shift. Okay, fair enough. Karen, uh, Chris Bassett isn't a big strikeout guy. Um, that's not how he's going to get his outs, and you don't have to be. Uh, I would rather have a guy go out there and throw twenty-seven pitches and then sit the hell down. <laughs> Like, really, you know what I mean? So I'm not necessarily worried about how those outs happen. Um, however, he's not a big strikeout guy, and we know that Major League Baseball is in love with strikeouts. Um, but here's Chris Bassett uh, last season with a 22.4% uh, strikeout rate. So, Karen, um, that um, equaled – I lost it here, sorry. Uh, his number of strikeouts was 167 in 181 innings. So, Karen, my question to you, is in his projected 180 innings, they have him for 160 strikeouts. Do you think that is accurate? Too low, too high? Yeah, that, that's a reasonable projection. Like you said, I mean, his career his career strikeouts per nine isn't all that high. He, he's not that kind of pitcher. What, part of the reason he's been successful is he limits blocks. He, mm-hmm. career 2.8 walks per nine innings, and, and that's very good. I mean, throw strikes, or, or, you know, maybe I'm dating myself, but, you know, strikeouts are boring besides they're fascist. <laughs> throw some gold ground balls, they're more democratic. I, I stand by that. I want pitchers on my team to get guys out, and I don't care if it's a ground ball out, a fly ball out, or a strikeout. And with the with the defense, I mean, they made run prevention one of their priorities this offseason. They've improved the defense, so maybe they'll be in for balls in play. Maybe a little more of those will turn into outs than than, than have in in the past. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. All right, so then we're going to move um, on to look at his ERA. Uh, since that's where we went with Alec Manoa. Um, Steve, 4.08 is his projected ERA. Your thoughts? Um, Again, I think that may be closer to what he puts up. Um, Again, not a knock on him as a pitcher, but I I think that he is going to be flirting with four. Just just on either side of, of four, he's going to be flirting there. So I don't really have a major problem with that. Again, mm-hmm. I mean, of the three of us, I was probably less enthused about the signing of Bassett uh, than um, than you guys are. And I, I don't understand uh why they felt that that he was you know an option to be you know the fourth starter or whatever i, I mean i i'm not quite on board with that 
But um, I, if he's a four ERA, we're going to see, I think, runs per game go up a little bit, even though all the launch angle and stuff is going to be taken away to a certain degree and shifting. I think we're going to see runs go up a little bit, so I think that's going to spill over to, to yeah. all all pitchers, to be really honest. Yeah, and then that's a fair point too that we we ought really have no way of quantifying or or even you know indicating how much of an impact it's going to have. We just have to kind of wait and see, um, which is something that kills people who follow baseball and analytics, um, the wait and see approach. But anyway, um, Karen, uh, I'm going to throw this to you once again. We are going to look at, um, we're going to place a bet here. We're going to do the over under last season. uh, Chris Bassett put up 2.7 wins above replacement. Steamer has him at an even two. Karen, do you take the over or the under on Chris Bassett, two wins above replacement in 2023? Over. Not not insanely over, but yeah, I'd, I'd go over somewhere between two and a half and three. He's he's going to be a solid pitcher for them. He's going to make a good, positive con- contribution to them winning. And yeah. Okay. It's Steve, the, yeah. sorry, Karen. Um, Steve, the over or under on Chris Bassett's two wins above replacement? Part of me wants to say under only because I don't think he's going to, pitch as deep into games as perhaps um, the two of you do, but I'm going to go over because I think for a team like the Blue Jays that that is going to either be a division winner or be, you know, the first wild card, let's say, uh, from a record standpoint, um, I would imagine that he'd have to be higher than two. If he's not, then I think the Blue Jays, you know, are are going to have an issue because, okay, now you only have your big three and what's happening in the four and five spots. So I'll go over, but I'm, it's not a competent over. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of in the same boat, not necessarily for the same reasons, but I think a two, maybe 2.5, but I wouldn't go any higher than that. So I'm, I'm going to say slightly over. I know that's not a huge heroic bet or anything like that, but I am going to take the over just not by much. Um, and of course, don't forget, download the BetStamp app on the App Store, Google Play, use the code JFTC and start betting like a pro.